Come on, y'all. Don't give up now. Don't give up now. Praise the Lord. This is a marvelous time for us. And today, <clears throat> I'm not going to waste any time. We're going to just get right to it. I want to talk today in light of the feast that we're in. This is the feast that talks about the gathering of his people. This is the feast that culminates all of the feasts, and this culminates what the Messiah is going to do. So I want to, by admin, a, a message of admonition, that we walk in the light. That's what I want to talk about today. We want to walk in the light of God. And it's a specific way, and it's time that we begin to talk to the people of God about this because the sin issue he's taken care of. His blood never loses its power. But there is something that's, that we have to do in order to maintain. Has anybody ever heard this before I pray? That all is in the hands of God except the fear of God. Because that's true. He's given us a free will, and I was talking about this earlier this week about the free will that we have is actually the free will to choose the wrong thing. Because he has shown us nothing but good. So if it's evil, we didn't get it from him. So we have a free will, and everybody, man always talks about exercising his free will. Yeah, but let me make it plain to you. It's your free will to choose to do the wrong thing. So if you end up on the other side of heaven, it will not be God's fault. It will solely be in your hands. He's not a murderer. But I'm telling you, you can commit spiritual suicide. Father, in the name of Yeshua, we bless you and thank you so much for who you are. We glorify you, Father, because you are El Emet. You are the God of truth. And Lord, there's so much falsehood out here today. But Lord, your truth is very plain. And it manifests itself through the Spirit of God in the fruit of the Spirit that allows us to see and to prove that everything about you is true. And all that you have done for us is the truth. And now, Lord, that we're in these days where well, all of these falsehoods have shown up and crept up among your people, and they have built up over the years to do their best to throw up the plan of God, but we know that your plan cannot be undone. When you hung on the cross, you said, it is finished. You said, telestai, it is finished. And so, Lord, you have paved the way for us, but we do have something that we must do where you're concerned. So, Lord, give us today a healthy fear of who you are and a knowledge that will help us to understand what we must do to remain and to be found faithful when you return. We ask this in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and all of God's people said amen. 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 So we're going to go today, let's, we're going to go to 1 John chapter 1. We're going to read through 1 through 10. And I'm going to break this down. And I'm going to tell you now, I will not finish this today because it's too much. But we're going to roll real hard. So I will finish the rest of it on Tuesday. So know that already. So we want to see you on Tuesday so you can get the rest of this. Amen. So 1 John. And 1 John is one of those books that... Um, when you really understand what's happening, it's amazing that nothing, nothing new is under the sun. Nothing has changed. Man has been doing what man has been doing since the beginning of time. 
and in the fall. So it's nothing new. It goes throughout the years, but God's plan has always been available to us. Amen? So this particular book, it, 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 it faces a multitude of situations and problems between 1 John and then you have the second epistle and then the third. And he's actually, it's hard, it's been hard for the scholars to kind of define it because he talks about so many different moral things that are going on. But he's speaking to the people of God, and it seems as though there is somewhat of a division that was developing within the believing communities. And that's always been a situation with us because we're divided in our understanding. And that's why earlier when we were talking and I said, Lord, what happened? And he said, I know what happened. Man got involved in being led by the, the evil one. And he placed so many things in the midst that we found it hard and we saw we started to develop our own way. And so that has a lot to do with a lot of the divisions. But it is believed that John was writing to the churches in Asia Minor. Now some scholars different, but it could be very well that that was the case. And due to the broad range of moral topics that was discussed in this epistle, then uh, he spoke about it. And however, the topics are of great concern for the church today, the body of Messiah. When I say the church, you know, I don't even really like to use that word so much anymore because our minds are set that when we say church, we're thinking about bricks and mortar. But it's not that. It's, it's the congregation. It's the, it's the kahal or the adar, which is the congregation of God, right? Because uh, Jesus could teach us out in the field out there. And in fact, that's what he did. It didn't look anything like this at that time. So if we understand it from the time it was written, we would do better today to understand that this is only a meeting place for us to come together, for us to learn, and then for us to go out, right? Sort of a recharge place. This is, this is what we're, we're um, we might need to get to the wooden benches again, maybe, you know, the pad's not so, so comfortable, right? But... He, he, he's talking to us, and, and, and really, it, it's my prayer that as, as this goes forward in this season, that we do better this year. Um, and I, uh, I say this as a disclaimer for nobody to feel any judgment that would be coming from me as your brother in Christ, but understand that the Holy Spirit will do the conviction that needs to be done when the word is put up there. So feel free to open your heart up to it so that you can hear as we said early, Brother Gordon talked about that ear and what it's for, and I appreciate that. The fact that it's there for a reason. And then Jesus said, if you have ears, let him hear. Amen? Amen. So we're going to kind of go through this one by one because it's going to be a lot of scriptures. So if you're writing down or if you get to look at it later, I know we're live streaming, but if you get to look at it later, pay attention. If you write it down and go back, and I admonish you, go back and look at it. I don't want you to take my word for it alone just because I'm today standing behind the sacred desk. I want you to study for yourself because that's important. Amen? So let's look at this. It says, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. Let me tell you. I like this a little better because it makes it plain to us. It says, the word which gives life. Now, we, we as people that understand Torah, we know what it's saying. It's saying the Torah which gives life. He existed from the beginning. Now notice, it's translated by Dr. Stern, a Messianic uh, Jew. He says, he existed. From the beginning. The foundation I want to lay today about walking in the light is about us understanding that to walk in the light is to walk in him. That's right. And that's how we make it. Earlier this week, we heard about from Joshua 1.8 about this book of the law, this book of the Torah, not departing from our mouths, 
that when we meditate in it day and night, and then Psalm talks about us delighting in it, that we would have success. Amen. All of that culminates to Yeshua HaMashiach. So it says, he existed from the beginning. He, we have heard him. He was given an eyewitness account that we heard him speak. This is John. Oh, uh, Yehokanan, for those of you who understand. He said, he, we heard him. And we have seen him with our eyes. And we have contemplated him. And we have touched him with our hands. Physically touched him with his hands. And in this verse, what John is talking about, he's getting into, and I'm going to cover it a little further because as I build on this, and then on Tuesday we're going to talk about this. I want you all to remember this term, memra. Remember that. Okay, memra. Because it's, it's talking about the word, but we're going to get into it. The verse introduces the supernatural features of the Messiah as he did with the Gospel of John. So, in, in the beginning, John said, in the beginning was the word, again, it's talking about the same thing. Now he's writing again in this epistle. He's already written the gospel. He's writing in this epistle because people are beginning to drift and they're getting off, right? So he's testifying again. And I want to lay the foundation with some other scriptures attached to this to let you know that this disciple who became an apostle stayed true to the rest in terms of who this man is. Amen? So, he's laying out the supernatural, and he's laying out the gospel as he did in the gospel of John, speaking about the divinity of Jesus. That is currently in question, whether he is the Son of God and whether he is God in the flesh. That is a topic of debate today, but it's been a topic of debate. It's not new. It's just that it's surfacing more in a greater measure, which prophetically, was already spoken. Amen? So, let's look at some cross-references. Can we go to Romans uh, chapter 11 and verse 33? We'll go from 33 to 36. And we're going to come back, because we're going to go line by line on this John. And I want to connect the dots, because that's what's wrong. When we hear sermons that don't connect the dots, you can't go back and check anything. Amen. Amen? And we're not here to dupe anybody. We're here to do what we can. And when we found it, as my teachers always taught me, don't take my word for it. Study for yourselves. And so if you find something that I've spoken that's incorrect, we can sit down and do what's called midrash. And we can discuss it. Because God is on the inside of us. If you're a true believer and you've accepted the Messiah, then God is in you. And he's given us a way to discuss the word of God that we could reach a place of agreement. And even if we tend to disagree, we can, be dis we can disagree without being disagreeable. We don't have to harm and kill one another. Amen? So he says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments, and his ways past finding out. Now, he's telling us the depth. And I like it. I just love it the way it's translated. So simple. Um, I'm going to get there with you. And I'm going to read it to you. And it's just talking about the depth of how deep this is. And everybody is wondering, is he who he says he is? Amen? Oh, the depth of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God, how inscrutable are his judgments, how unsearchable are his ways. For, give me the next verse, for who has known the mind of Adonai, and who has been his counselor? See, men, we get real clever with thinking we understand something because we're, we're smart. But these boys back here understood because this is John saying, I walk with him. I talk with him. We considered the things he said. And there was no one, no one had done what he had done. Even Moses, our great teacher, no one has done what this man has done. Amen? So he understood this. And he said, for who has known the mind of Adonai? Who has been his counselor? 
In verse 35, he says, or who has given him anything and made him pay it back? Who's given anything to God that he had to give back to repay? In verse 36, for from him and through him and to him all things to him be the glory forever. It's the Apostle Paul. Now, Paul, among all of the, amongst all of the uh, apostles, he was the scholar. But he never walked with Yeshua. He met him on the road to Damascus. He met him in the spirit. And all of the knowledge that he had acquired from the greatest schools of his day out of the house of Gamaliel, or as we say, Hillel, he was trained by the greatest minds of his day. And he was a top-notch student, but yet he found out that he didn't know nothing. And thus as it is today, everybody's doing a whole lot of things. But what Paul understood was when he met on Jesus on the road to Damascus and the power of God hit him, he knew that everything he had studied wasn't going to add up. But here he is now testifying to that power that he, that knocked him off the horse and blinded him and set him down for a few days. You know, sometimes we so brainy, somebody needs to tell us, why don't you go sit down? Because you know everything, but yet know nothing. Come on back to John for me. We're going to bounce around a little bit, Myra. I appreciate you. Let's go to another place, Apostle. Let's go to Philippians 2, 6 through 11. I'm laying the groundwork so we can see that all of them are saying the same thing. Now, John walked with him, but now this is the Apostle Paul who writes two-thirds of the New Testament, or the Brit Hadashah as we know it. He writes it, and he's testifying to this. So in Philippians, he says, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal to God. That's not so with us today. That's why I say all is in the hands of God except the fear of God. Men now are so until knowing nothing about how they got created, how they got here, you know, we call it, you know, when we breathe and we say, uh, I'm breathing, I'm breathing air. You don't know what you're breathing. That's what we've coined it. But suppose I said you breathe in the breath of God, and if God was to hold his breath, we could all drop dead. Well, you don't know. That's what we call it. That's what we name it. But we're so smart. We can split an atom, but we can't make one. Those two, he, those two Hebrew words, bara and afar, all we can do is afar. Make something from what God has made. We can do that, and most of the time we make a mess. But only he can bara. Amen? I like it where it's written here. <laughs> he said it this way. And I want to read it for the clarity. Though he was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God, something to be possessed by force. In verse 7. On the contrary, he emptied himself in that he took the form of a slave. King James says a servant or form of a slave. I like the strength of the word slave, because we know the strength of the word slave. Amen? By becoming like a human beings are. So he testified in the gospel that the word became flesh. He's now telling them about the supernatural because you're moving away from him. And now the other brothers, Paul, is telling them, yeah, he is who we said he is. And today, even back then, there were those that walked away saying, nah, you're not who you think you are. 
But we're still saying that today. And that's the reason why we're walking in darkness, and we're going to get to that. Amen? Keep going, Byron. Go to the next. Um, we're going to go all the way to 11. I want to work this thing for a little bit. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even to death on the cross. And when he appeared as a human being, he humbled himself still more by becoming obedient even unto death, the death on the stake as a criminal. So he became like a criminal. And see, that's what it really means when you say bear your cross. When he said bear, bear your cross and come after me, what he's saying is consider your life outside of me like the life of a criminal and put it to death. Because disciple has the word discipline in it. That means we are to walk as he did. So that means we need to latch on to the mindset that he had, know what he knew, and humble ourselves as men. And that includes women. When I say men, I'm talking about men and women. That we humble ourselves to that point that we could walk in, in the light with him. Amen? And so 9 says, therefore... God raised him to the highest place and gave him the name above every name. We just finished singing that song. There is no name above his name. And last week we sang There's, there is only one name with power to save. Right? We know that, right? And verse 10. That in honor of the name given Yeshua, every knee will bow. In heaven, on earth, and underneath the earth. So that means every angel, every human on earth, and every demon below. Now, I didn't say they're going to confess it willingly, but they're going to confess it. It's going to happen. Amen? So, you know, we, we can flex all we want to flex. And we can act any way we want to. But it's coming. Amen? It's going to happen. And we need to be clear about that. And yeah, not everybody's going to believe it. That's why we already know some folks ain't going to make it. That's not our concern. Our concern is to follow him and to do his will so that he will actually, we will bear witness against them on that day. When you look at him and say, well, you know, I wasn't that bad a guy. I did what I could. And he's going to say, well, you remember that fellow with the beautiful gray hair named Joseph Green? And he tried to teach you all that he could teach you, and you rejected it? See, we don't realize how important it is we are as a witness to him because we're going to win some, and some are not going to hear. Either way, that's not our concern. And it's not our job to condemn them in any manner. It is not our job to look at them and say anything. Because we done got so now that everything has to be, as we say, politically correct, and you can't say this and you can't say that. But the point of it is they don't even understand what it's, when, it, when the commandment says, thou shalt not judge. All that's saying is you shall not condemn anybody. But you do have to judge what people are doing. But they don't want to hear that. They just say, don't judge me. No, I'm not judging you. I'm doing my best to throw out the lifeline that you can grab hold of it. Now, I'm not going to get upset if you reject it. That's not my call. I'm not supposed to get upset with you about that. What I'm supposed to do, because as he humbled himself even more, that I go home and lift your name up before God and continue to do that in love. But never to condemn you. Never to say to you that you're going to bust hell wide open. I should never say that. Don't we should never say that to anybody. Because now it's measure for measure. What I just put out might be coming my way. Watch yourself. It's not your call. 
Your call is to extend the hand. Amen? We got to be clear about that. In verse 11. And every tongue will acknowledge that Yeshua the Messiah is Adonai. Listen, I like it this way because what it says up here doesn't give me enough. It says Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, we didn't heard that so much, but it says he is Adonai. See, that makes you think a little bit. We didn't heard, we didn't heard the Lord so much, the Lord, we didn't heard so much, it's almost like we forget what we're saying. He is the saving aspect of Yahweh. Now, they messed us up by giving us doctrines of Trinity and all that, but the Bible says Echad, he is one. Okay, now, it's real simple. I'm going to fix this for y'all in two seconds. I'm Donnie. There's only one of me, right? You don't see, you know, unless you got bad vision, there ain't two of me standing, it's just one, okay? I'm a brother. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm even a cousin. A friend. I'm all of that, right? How many standing here? Just one. Is that hard to understand? But see, they threw a doctrine in there called Trinity, and now we don't know what to say. And for you, for you that study, check the Council of Nicaea, 325 AD, when they finalized it, and then messed everybody up. Well, what do we say? Father? Do we son? Well, what is it? Ehad. The Bible said one. He's one. So he said, I will come. I, even I, will seek out my sheep in a day when they were lost. That's what he said. So I'm here now. I'm the saving aspect. So guess what? He wasn't walking around on the earth and nobody was on the throne. He could do all of that. We lack to know who he is, and that's why with our little finite mind, we try to come up with it. But we've already read how unsearchable is he. We have no way of knowing what he knows. We didn't create him. He created us. Am I right? Okay. Now I got an amen, and we got some testimony there, right? Give me 1 Timothy 3.16. I'm just trying to state my case like a good lawyer. That's all. When we put all these things together, we see how many people are going to testify to who he is before we recognize who he is. Okay. Let me get there. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. What does it say? He was manifest in the flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit, capital S, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Why are we having such a hard time? It's simple. We're going to get to that too. It's so beautiful to understand that this is exactly what he meant. Great beyond all question is the formerly hidden truth underlying our faith. He was manifested physically and proved righteous spiritually, seen by angels, and proclaimed among the nations. That's what the Gentiles mean, y'all. It does not mean what we think. Okay, goyim, the nations, ethnic groups, the nations. That's what it means. We done messed that up too. And proclaimed among the nations, trusted throughout the world, and raised up in glory to the heaven. That's who he is. Manifested physically. I know you're thinking, well, when is he going to get to walking in the light? That's what I'm doing. First, I got to show you who the light is. 
right? There you go. There you go. Second Timothy 2.11. We're going to move in a minute, but I got to lay this foundation so we can stop going back and forth. Is he God? Is he not God? What is he? God said he was coming to save us. 2 Timothy 2, 11 through 13. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Now what does that mean, dead with him? Dead to the life that you're trying to live outside of him. So if you're dead with him, you will live with him now and forevermore. See, the problem is we are struggling and struggling, but he didn't struggle when he was here. And he went through adversity. He went through things that we haven't even experienced. Which one of y'all been hung on the cross? Which one of y'all was beat with the, what is the nine, what is it called, elder? Nine, nine, the cat of nine tails. Which one of us got beat with that? Which one, which one of us was walking with a big old cross member because we were saying repent and the kingdom of God is at hand and somebody stepped out the crowd and stole you in the face and spit on you? Which one of us went through that? We lose faith when somebody step on our foot. We lose faith when somebody call you something that you're not. Well, you know what he said to me? Okay. You know what he called me? Is that you? My mother used to tell me it ain't, it ain't what they call you, it's what you answer to. So, I mean, so what you getting upset for? And this, the, the, the new thing now is uh, I ain't going to be disrespected. But you walking around disrespecting everybody. And so because it's coming back at you, now you can't take that. And listen, you don't have to disrespect somebody openly. You can do it privately. You can do it in many ways. Your thoughts. But he know it. So what we all upset about? I'm going to let nobody disrespect me. You disrespect people all the time. So it's coming back to you. What you upset about? Stop disrespecting people and maybe it'll stop coming your way. You reap what you sow. <laughs> 12 and 13. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. See, now that's one that we're not paying any attention to because we think that everything is supposed to be rosy. And unfortunately, don't get me wrong, it's been, we've been given a message that's not so good all the time because everybody thinks that, you know, I'm in the kingdom, I'm going to be a millionaire. He ain't said nothing about that. He said we suffer for his sake. And the point is we can suffer, and sometimes we're suffering for what we've done. We're not suffering for his sake. He said, you suffer for my sake. I got you on that one. But if you done done something stupid and you suffering, that's on you. Repent and learn the right way. And, and that means to adjust your aim. The whole word for sin is an archery term. So if you had a, if you had a dartboard and a bullseye, and, and how many of us ever played darts? Okay, what are we trying to hit? The bullseye. And that means, to, to hit the bullseye means you have interpreted the scriptures properly and applied it to your life, and you're walking it out, as we call the holocaust, to walk it out. But if you miss, it's a sin. Then you go back, your spotter will say, sin, adjust to the left. That's the word. You go back to the word and adjust your aim. I didn't get that right last time. Read it again. Adjust it, understand it, and then shoot again. And keep shooting until you hit the bullseye. That's what, it, that's what sin is all about. I've missed the mark. So adjust yourself. 
If you've done wrong, if you've transgressed against people, if you've done things you shouldn't do, repent for it, go back to the instructions, get it right, and shoot again. And when you're doing that, you're beginning to walk in the light. Because the blood doesn't lose its power, but all you're going to say is, Lord, forgive me. Go to your brother and sister and own what you did. Now, if they don't forgive you, that's on them now. Now, they got to deal with it. I can't forgive you for what you did for me. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm asking you to forgive me. And all I can do is that. And if you can make restitution, do so. We making this thing hard and walking in the light is not hard. But we first got to recognize who he is. Give me that last verse. If we believe not, yet he abided faithful. He cannot deny himself. So whether we believe that he is who he is or not, that's not causing the throne in heaven to shake. I don't believe. Okay. Ain't nothing shaking in heaven because you don't believe. God ended up there going, oh my goodness, he doesn't believe. No, he's not. He's saying, well, I wish I could hook you up, but um, maybe I'll send a couple more your way. You ain't no, ain't no big deal. But he's saying he can't deny himself. He's not going to turn around and be something you want him to be. He's going to be who he is. He's not going to change. The word that existed from the beginning was Yeshua the Messiah. And they were an eyewitness. All of this is understood by the Spirit of God. You cannot fathom this with your finite mind. You cannot. So if you're having a trouble believe, believing who he is, you need the Spirit of God. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about the cleansing from your missing the mark. We're creatures of habit. And after a while, we begin to enjoy what we're doing, no matter what. Can we go back to 1 John and go to um, chapter 1 and go to verse 2 and 3? I got 22 minutes. There's never enough time. But I'm not giving up on this. We're going to walk this thing out, so we're going to keep on. Because we have to do better. All of us. It's not me or we. It's we. All of us. You got to do better. Nobody's exempt. A repentant life is one for all of us to live, recognizing what we've done. But it's going to get better and better. And we're going to walk more in the light. And the more we walk in it, the more the path is illuminated. But it's only going to be done by his spirit. It's not going to be done by what you think. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you the eternal life. Or the eternal God. That's what was shown to them. Which was with the Father. It was what? It was with the Father and it was manifested unto us. In verse 3. That which we have seen and heard declare unto, unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Yeshua the Messiah. So, we're supposed to be building a community of faith and we're sharing this so someone else can share in it with us. The fellowship that we have with the Father. Now, the problem is they're looking at us and they're saying, I don't see very much. Don't nobody get upset about that because he hasn't returned yet. So we got time to do what we got to do. And it's as simple as repenting and getting serious about it and making a change. But that fellowship is this. 
that, fellow, that word fellowship is very, very important because what it's telling us is we're participating in the life of Messiah. Well, we say, well, he's dead. No, he left the life with us. He said, and this is what I need you to do. I need you to walk as I did. As, as is a very powerful little word. As means walk in the, to the same degree. That's what as means. To the same degree, walk. And stay on it. Because you're going to continue to improve by reason of use and practice. And don't worry. I'm going to be right there with you. And my blood will cleanse you every time you recognize what you've done wrong and you come to me and you say, forgive me, I'm going to forgive you. What did Peter say to him? Lord, this knucklehead continues to sin against me. How many times I got to forgive this clown? And the Lord said, has he asked for forgiveness? Keep going. I've already done it seven times, which was a doctrine that seven times being a complete number, Jesus kicked the end out of it. He said 70 times seven, which really when you add it up, it means it's infinite. It doesn't stop. Every time he asks you, forgive him. Why? That's what I do for you. So they was an eyewitness, right? The Lord has manifested to us in spirit as he did with Paul. See, for us, we're on the side where Paul is. You want to know why everybody loves the Apostle Paul so much? Because he's more like us than you understand. We, he studied and so did we, but he didn't get to walk with them like the others did, the other 12. Okay? We have to meet him in the spirit like he did. Because he, we can't walk with him. Not right now. But in the spirit, we can. Amen? So we're like the Apostle Paul. And the point is, some of us are brainy like Paul, which is good. That means we got a chance. Amen? Paul's experience was, it was that powerful. And see, that's what our experience need to be. The evidence of his power is the change in the Apostle's life to follow after he walked in the light. See, Paul is a great example. Now, it's kind of funny because I, I used to ask sometime in my studies, I would go, well, wait a minute, um, Peter and all them and, and John, they walked with them and, you know, but it seems like they didn't do as much work. But the truth is they did more. We don't have everything that's written down. Believe that. We don't have it. But Paul stuck out. But the, the thing I'm trying to get to is that Paul had a powerful experience with God in the spirit. And prior to this encounter, Paul thought he was right with God. See, this book, it's not written to sinners as we call sinners. This, and I, I'm going to change that just for the sake of instruction. This book is not written to non-believers. It's written to those who believe. This is our mail from heaven. So I don't expect anyone, and we shouldn't expect anyone who doesn't believe to know anything about this book. That's right. You're reading somebody. That's right, Brother Gordon. Reading somebody else's mail, right? And being that you don't know who's writing to them, then you're looking at it like whatever. But it's our job to take the letter and explain it to them so they'll know. But here's the deal. More so than explaining it to them, we live it. If you live it, then it's much easier to explain it to them because the evidence is there. When the power hit Paul on the road to Damascus, he said, he, he said, who art thou, Lord? He knew something. Had to be. Paul was a bad dude. He was a bad dude. He was not playing. He wasn't playing before he met Yeshua. No. But what happened was he became supernatural after he met him. Yeah. That's right. That's right. He was a go-getter. Right. He said, give me the letters. I'm going to go track these chumps down that's calling this guy's name. 
this blasphemous group. And then he got toe up himself. But that's what God does, right? So he had a new fellowship with God. The point was he was seeking the Messiah all along. And there's a lot of people out here right now with all of this information now all over the place. And that's the danger, particularly young people, because we can't put this thing down. Where is it? I don't even have it. You can't, you can't put it down. This thing is like, you know, it's beeping, it's calling you, and it, if you put the thing in your ear, sometimes I'm talking, I got the thing in my ear, and it starts talking to me, and I'm like, I'm not talking to you. But it answers you. So that means it's watching you. Yeah, we ain't thinking about that, right? You know how you got Siri in the house, and all of a sudden you doing, do you know Siri's recording conversations? So, you know, let's, let's not take this technology too far because, you know, we don't know where that's going to end up, right? But we, people are searching and they're looking. And we have the answer. We have the answer. But you're going to have to show that you have the answer. It's not going to be just because you say so. Because they can say, well, I can go read this book. I can go follow this guy. I can follow this one. I can do this one. I can choose this. This is not new. We talking about new age religion. This ain't new age. This stuff is old. It's just coming back. Can we go back to 1 John? Verse 4. And, I, and, and then we're going to go to Romans 16, but... I want to show you that. I want to read this verse first. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. See, listen, something is wrong with us if we're going to be honest when we don't have no joy and we call ourselves children of God. You can see the point of it is the whole thing what I'm trying to get you to see about walking in the light. If you're walking in the light, you're going to have joy even in tribulation. Not just when it's good, but when things are good, you really should be rejoicing. So this is a time in this Sukkot, we're supposed to be rejoicing. So, Sister Maria, what I was talking about, about what's happening, we're assimilated. And we're going to deal with that. I'm putting a series together on that. We are assimilated into what we got snatched into in this Western culture. And then they took the book, and I'm going to tell you now, ain't nothing wrong with the book, but they wrote a lot about the book, and we following what people wrote as opposed to reading what the book said. How do we get into all of these other days that they gave us where we're supposed to be Christians that ain't in the book? And then the book has Sukkot in it, and we don't pay no attention to that. We say, oh, that's for the Jews. No, it ain't. It doesn't say that it's a Jewish feast. It says these are the feasts of the Lord. So if he's your Lord, then it's not a Jewish feast day. It is the feast of the Lord. And if he didn't want, us, if he didn't want those who were not Israelite born, then why would he send Paul to the Goyim, to the nations? But we forget Peter went first. God called him, showed him a vision, and said, go. There is a man already calling on me, wondering. Go to him because you got the answer. See, we, we forget all of this. Many of us have no joy. And instead of the joy, there is much conflict among the saints and even within our families. You are not supposed to lose your family if you are walking in the Lord. Now, let me clarify that. If all of the family is walking in the light, you're going to be fine. See, it's, it has a component to it that has to be followed. 
But if not, you're going to have the divisions. The beautiful thing is God can reconcile all things. It's not impossible for him to reconcile your situation. However, it's going to depend on you or the people involved, if I say it that way. Because even when we're teaching, people are hearing part of the thing, and that's why I'm saying, don't take what I'm saying as the absolute truth verbatim. Go check what I'm saying. So now, guess what? When we meet again, you know the truth, and I know the truth. And we should be able to embrace one another as brothers, and we know the truth. So we have no joy, controversy over what scripture says and what is required of us. That's the biggest problem in the body of Christ. Somebody threw a grenade in the room and closed the door and blew us up, and now we're all over the place. But the scriptures ain't changed. And then I hear this, and you hear this one, well, well, a man wrote the Bible. What is anybody reading that a man didn't write? But you see, without the Spirit of God, you can't discern certain things. Because if you put the formula together, the instructions together, it will prove itself in your life. Well, I don't believe that. Man wrote the Bible. Okay, what you reading? I'm reading this. Who wrote that? Well, I'm going to write something myself. Well, are you a man? Come on, y'all. This is foolishness. This is foolishness. It ain't that hard to figure out that God is the truth. Love will be all in your heart, man, and you'll be able to stand things that the strong men claim they're strong enough to handle, but oh, boy. In them places they don't want to talk about, they bent over weeping and crying like little babies. But they could stand if they knew the truth. Come on, y'all, don't get quiet on me. Verse 5, please. I got seven minutes. That's what I want. I don't care if you hoop and holler, if you think. Come on. I'm all right, then I've done my job. Look at this. This is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. He is what? Aura, which is a root to Torah. So either way you slice this thing, when you get back to the original language, you find out in the beginning was the Torah or the aura, or the light, and the light is God. So in the beginning, it was God. And it ain't changed. In the beginning was God. And he created us, and he's the only one with a plan to save us. That God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. None. This word message, if you look it up, it actually gets into, and um, Sister Marie, would you look that one up for me? Because it's actually promise. It says message, but it's really, when you get down into the, the depth of it, and, and it is, um, it's, a, it's a Greek New Testament, it's 1860, and it's um, epagilia, apagilia, but it's really Promise. So if we read it right, it says, this is the promise which we have heard of him. Because there was a promise in the Torah about a Messiah. One Moses. One is coming like unto Moses. And this is the one you're going to listen to. When they're on the Mount of Transfiguration, they say, oh, it's nice up here, Lord. You know, we ought to build a temple to you and Moses and all that. And then the cloud spoke and said, hey, I'm paraphrasing, hey, wait a minute. And his, and his raiment lit up and said, wait a minute. 
This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Moses did good, but I'm the one who taught Moses on the mountain. Number six. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, here we go. See, now you was waiting. When is, when is he going to get to walking in the light? There it is. But I had to set the groundwork, right? So if we say we have fellowship, which means we're participating in the life of Yeshua, and we walk in darkness, now what? We lie and do not the truth. You know what you're doing. All of us. We know. We act like, you know, well, if God don't come down and tell me it's wrong, it's all right. You already know it's wrong. You already know because nobody is responding to it favorably. Fellowship, participation in the life of Yeshua. And he didn't do anything that was not from the Father. He didn't say anything. He didn't do anything. He didn't think anything that didn't come from the Father. Now, you say, that's a tough call. No, it's not. Because he realized that we in the fallen state, he wasn't. But he said, that's why I'm God. I came so you would know you're going to be all right. Yes, you're in a fallen state. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. But I got the blood that covers. You're covered. All I need you to do is do what I prescribe. Repent. I got you covered. Do y'all ever thought about the fact the thief on the cross made it in? He didn't get down. He died because he did what he did, and he was judged. But eternally, he lived. So he didn't get down off the cross. He didn't get baptized in water and join First Baptist Church. And he didn't get filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues and everything else. No, he died. But he said, this day you shall be with me in paradise. Now, some of us been in the Lord for a minute and have done some things that would be merited. So why are we so upset about this thing? We just need to understand what walking in the light looks like and continue on. Think about it. I got two minutes. I'm going to hold right there, and I'm going to take this two minutes to just, because I want y'all to come back Tuesday. We're going to finish this. My point is we have to know who he is, and we sometimes have to be shook up to get back to who he is. I'm not saying that we don't know, but what I'm saying is are we thinking? Are we moving in his will? is are we fellowshipping with him enough for him to nudge us and say, hey, wait a minute. What's that about to come out your mouth? I'm talking about before we say it. See, he can get to the point where he monitors, he will monitor your thoughts if you will pay attention to him because he is not a bully. He is not going to overtake you like the evil one does. Now, the evil one puts you to a place where you feel like you just got to sin. I just got to do what he said because I got the impulse to do this, and that's what I'm going to do. The Holy Spirit is not going to do that. He's a gentleman. And he's going to say, hey, Joe, you, you want to say that? Do, do you want to do that? What about me? Would I, would I do that? Would I say that? Would I think like that? Boy, you know, he got it fixed for us to walk in him. 
He would not tell us we could do it if we couldn't do it. Why would he do that? He's, he's not like the world. You know how you say, am I being punked? No, he's not going to punk you. He's not going to say, well, you could do that and you can't do it. No, if he says you can do it, you can do it. But you need me to help you. And that's why in John he said, I will leave with you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will give you the paraclete, the one called alongside to help you. He will never leave you. He will always be with you. But I need you to rehearse the word so that I can remind you what the instructions are. So when you get ready to make a decision, and when you call on me about the desires of your heart, your desires, the desires of your heart are for the kingdom. So why wouldn't I give it to you? He has nothing to do with our selfish desires. That's on us. I'm out of time. Now, when we get back, y'all see all these little red things here? We haven't done half of them. That's how much word I'm going to put on you. It's coming. We're going to stay on it. We, Pastor, the Lord's saying to us, EWC, you have to do better this year. And we, as the leadership in this body, we going to be held accountable? Yeah. And me being an old military man, we used to say it rolls downhill. So if me and Pastor are going to be accountable, y'all going to be accountable. But we can do it. We have no reason to fail. Our children are going to do better this year. They're going to do better this year. And we are going to do better this year. And we're going to have to get rid of all of this fear we got because that's another part I'm going to get into on Tuesday about that fear that we have of this and that. But I'm going to show you how it's false fear. Yeah. All right. Because we'll do whatever we want to do. Oh, yes. Them doing it. Mask or no mask. Yeah. That's right. Shot or no shot. Yeah. Whatever we want to do, we'll do it. Yeah. Social distance or not. I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm just, it ain't me, trust me, I ain't that smart. But I'm telling you, we're going to examine ourselves. We're coming out of a state now where we've, we've gone through the feast and stay in this cycle. I'm telling y'all, stay in this cycle because the feast days help to remind. What did he say? Keep these for a memorial. Why? I need you to memorize. I need you to remember I give you these things for your benefit. Don't take them lightly. They keep you clean. That's what they do. They keep you clean. And it's only a ritual if you make it one. If your heart ain't in it, it's a ritual. Because you don't get any credit for it if your heart ain't in it anyway. You know, you don't, get no, you don't get no credit for your prayers if your heart ain't in it. So it wasn't new. Ain't nothing new. He's sitting up there like this. Y'all ever seen that face? He's like, okay, yeah, okay, I hear you. He got a sense of humor. 
At least he gives me one, because I can see him sometime, and I'm talking to him, he's like, yeah, okay. You better get yourself together. You know, that's the way it has to be. We're going to do better. We, we need to challenge each other a little bit. Not in a bad way. Watch your mouth. Stop, you know, calling people out and, and making them feel bad. That's not our call. Encourage your brothers and sisters in love that we could be what we're supposed to be, you know, and then everybody will be all right. And you're going to see things grow. I want to see some young adults. I'm ready to teach some young adults. We only have a few children here because we're small in numbers, but I want some young adults that I want to sit down and teach because I'm watching and I see and I know that evil one is hot after you and he wants to mess you up bad. And we in the last days, we ain't got time for it. We ain't got time for it. Some of us, he gonna bring back, reel us in, amen? I just feel it, I don't know what y'all feeling, but I'm feeling it and I'm, I'm gonna be on this thing here. I'm, I'm gonna do my part. The hose gets the water before the grass, so before I could teach this to you, I had to get it and had to do something on the inside of me to say, okay, let's get it together. Seriously, people are dying, but people are being saved too. Don't forget that. People are being healed, right? I read to you last night, cancer free, right? Come on, y'all. Be encouraged, right? Let's give the Lord a hand and let me let Pastor come on. Now we're gonna get we're gonna get real heavy on Tuesday because it's Simcha Torah, and it'll be the last day, and then the new reading cycle starts. And I'm hoping that everybody will take advantage of the, of the reading cycle because it'll take us through the word. We just need more of the word. We we got we distracted and we got too much. We got our minds on too many things. And it's not that difficult because I'm telling you, I know you all love the Lord. But point is, if you don't focus your love on him, my beautiful wife is sitting over there. If I don't spend no time with her, she, she buzzing my phone like, yo, man, where you at? Amen. Amen. Right, babe? Look at you over there. Yep. Mm. Uh. <laughs> mm. I be trying to make money. I be at work and she be like, where you at, man? Where you at? Mm. You been there long enough. Mm. Yeah. So if you don't spend no time... How you gonna love? Love is time. That, that's yeah. what, that's what, I know it's his love language. If you don't spend no time with me, then I, I can't love up on you back. Mm. So we gotta spend a little more time. Yeah. You know, we yeah. gotta get the men together. Men, we gotta get together. Amen. Good to see you, Michael. Amen. You know, Amen. you know you, bro, man. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Gordon, thank you for coming. Yes. Sarah, thank you for yes. coming. Yes. You know, we, we, we're adding, all of us adding. The more we have, the more we add. Don't be afraid. We're going to yeah. be all right. Yeah. We're going to be all right. Do what you got to do. I'm not telling nobody not to be safe. Be safe. I do this all day long. I'm a supervisor. I'm yeah. saying, hey, put your mask on. Get away from each other. I'm doing this all day. So just do it. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. But also know that God's got us. Practice. We're going to be okay. Yeah. Amen. Pastor. Thank you. Sir. If you would. Woo!